There's seven things you might be doing that can almost guarantee your generator won't start when you need it most during a blackout. Proper fuel storage is at the heart of each one of these. And if you make these mistakes, your pure gas could end up looking like the trash that we drained out of this generator. Many of these mistakes are easy to make, especially if no one's ever shown you what to avoid. And you might be violating one of them every single time you turn your generator off. Let's fix that. The Ready Life, into the country. Hey, I'm Nick, and welcome back to The Ready Life, where your path to off-grid independence begins. When it comes to generator fuel storage, the margin for error is razor thin. Your generator isn't just another tool, it's your lifeline when everything else goes dark. So this generator has not been starting, and it has been sitting around. Honestly, it's an old, cheap generator, and we just haven't had any use for it. And so it's just been sitting here for years. I'm thinking that we're going to get a good example of some old, bad gas to show you what it looks like. And so what we're doing is we are taking the, this is the, um, line, the hose coming down from the gas tank into the carburetor. So I've broken it loose, took a pair of pliers like this, broke it loose, you know, took the clip off and all of that. And so now we're going to pull this out a set a container, a gas can or a glass container under here. And then I'm going to open the valve up here, the gas valve. And because there's not much gas in here, we're going to have to kind of tip this thing. So I'm going to tip it and see if we can get some of that gas out. And we'll turn the valve back off. Here's what we've got. That looks pretty interesting. You can see it. Okay, good. There's some weird sludgy stuff. I don't even know what that is. Is that water, maybe? So now what we're going to do is we're going to put some fresh gas in this so you can see the difference. Now look at that. This fresh gas looks almost like water. And look at that. No wonder this thing isn't wanting to start. If you are in this kind of a situation where you've got an engine that's been sitting around for a while, then your best bet is gonna be to drain the gas out. Don't even try to run the thing. You wanna drain the gas completely out. If there's any way you can take a hose loose like I did and drain it out there, take the, the sediment bowl off the bottom of the carburetor. Let me show you what that is here. If you have a carbureted engine, it's kind of hard to see. You'll have to get under here and point it up. So this is the sediment bowl on the bottom of the carburetor here. There's still gas in there. Even though we pulled that hose loose running into it, there's still gas in this sediment bowl and it's probably a mess. And it's entirely possible that the carburetor is all gummed up from the gas and it may have to be cleaned out and maybe even some parts replaced. That would be my advice is if you're in this kind of a situation where you did leave your generator for a while and you've got bad gas in it, drain the gas out first. All the gas that you can possibly get out and then fill it up with fresh gas that has PRIG in it and then try and run it. New spark plugs, stuff like that can help. Uh, but yeah, this is pretty, pretty remarkable, the difference between these two. So let's jump into the seven critical mistakes that could sabotage your power when you need it most. The first and arguably the most damaging mistake is using gasoline with ethanol. Here's the problem. Ethanol attracts moisture from the air. That might not sound like a big deal until you realize that moisture starts accumulating inside your gas tank, which can rust metal parts or freeze inside fuel lines when temperatures drop. Ethanol can also corrode carburetor components and eat away at rubber seals in engines that aren't designed to handle it. The result is a gummy, degraded mess that clogs your fuel system and prevents startup. Non-ethanol gas might cost a little more and be hard to find, but it's worth every penny. If you have trouble locating it in your area, we put a link in the description that has a list of gas stations in each state that carry non-ethanol gas. Number two is leaving the tank partially empty for long periods. Let's say your generator's sitting in a garage with a half-full tank. No big deal, right? Well, actually, that could be a problem if you leave it that way for a while. 
Partially empty tank leaves more air inside, which means more moisture and oxygen. And that oxygen reacts with your fuel in a process called oxidation. Over time, your gas breaks into sludge, rosin, and varnish. Worse still, the temperature swings at night can cause the vapor in the tank to condense, leaving water droplets behind. The solution is to keep your tanks full, but not over full, especially if you're planning for long-term storage. When you start to realize how fragile fuel really is, how easily it can go bad, evaporate, leak, get stolen, or even become impossible to buy, it's clear how vulnerable we are when we depend on it. Wouldn't it be amazing to take back control of your power and stop being at the mercy of the power grid or the oil cartel? We've been living comfortably off the power grid for over 25 years, and in the real cost of going off grid, we'll be sharing some of our top tips that have helped many others go completely off the grid and live a comfortable lifestyle without spending an arm and a leg on overpriced solar systems. Just head to thereadylife.com forward slash off grid cost to watch it. Next up is one of the sneakiest ways fuel gets compromised, a bad gas cap or a poorly sealed storage container. Whether it's your generator's tank or a portable gas can, a weak seal allows both air and moisture to sneak in, and that kicks off the same chain reaction we just talked about. Moisture contamination, oxidation, and fuel degradation. If your fuel smells strange, turns dark, or leaves a residue, your container might be the culprit. Use only airtight, fuel-rated containers, preferably ones with a gasket in the cap. Some folks are concerned about plastic cans breathing, and they prefer metal jerry cans. Perhaps they're onto something, but with my quality no-spill gas cans, I can't tell you how many times they've expanded or collapsed due to temperature changes, and that tells me that they're sealing really well. It seems logical to stash your fuel in the shed or garage, but if that space gets blazing hot during the day, you could be asking for trouble. Thankfully, this one's ventilated. But heat accelerates oxidation and causes fuel to vaporize. Combine that with temperature swings, and you've got the perfect recipe for condensation buildup in your tank. Try to store fuel in shaded locations that stay a moderate temperature. If you must use a shed or a garage and it's legal to do so, be sure you ventilate it so the temperatures don't get too extreme. Number five is storing untreated gas for long periods, and this is a big one. Untreated gasoline can go bad in just a few months when it's stored in really hot, humid conditions. And bad fuel doesn't just look weird, it loses energy content and messes with your engine, probably won't even run. The fix is to use a high-quality fuel stabilizer. We've personally used PRIG for nearly 30 years, and it's hands down the best that we've found. One time we tested it by storing gas in extreme heat and humidity for over six years, and the fuel still worked. One key tip, though. If you're keeping gas for a long time, treat it every year, even if it's already stabilized. It only takes a few minutes, but it makes sure that you're covered. If you find this tip helpful, hit that like button, and also be sure to click the link in the description if you want to pick up a bottle of this highly concentrated gas stabilizer that can even restore old gas to usable conditions. Number six is leaving gas in the carburetor. If your generator uses a carburetor instead of fuel injection, this one is critical. After your last use, if you just shut the engine off and walk away, a small amount of gas sits in the carburetor bowl, and that fuel degrades quickly, turns into a sticky varnish that clogs the jets and other parts inside. This one alone is probably responsible for the most my generator won't start calls. The solution is simple. Once you're done using the generator, just close the fuel shut off and keep the engine running and it'll burn the remaining fuel out of the carburetor and it'll shortly die from fuel exhaustion and there's no more gas in the carb and you're done. And number seven is hoarding old gas you don't rotate. Now here's a twist. While yes, it is possible to store gas safely for years, that doesn't mean you really should do it unless you need to. Fuel rotation is your best friend, and if you can burn and replace the stored fuel every three to six months, then do it. Use it in your car, lawnmower, or chainsaw, and then refill your containers and retreat them with stabilizer. That way, your emergency fuel is always fresh, and if life happens and you can't rotate for a while, you're still protected because you followed all the other principles. Just remember, fuel rotation is the simplest, cheapest insurance policy for your backup generator. But long-term self-reliance goes way beyond fuel. If you're serious about becoming less dependent on the grid, we'd love to help you take that next step. We've put together a free class called The Real Cost of Going Off-Grid, where we break down how off-grid power systems work and how to get started as efficiently as possible. Just head to thereadylife.com forward slash off-grid cost to get started, and I think you'll find this video to be a great resource also.